This is Healthy Souls with Father Nicholas Lowe, helping you to live a Christ-filled life in today's world. Father Nicholas is the pastor of St. John the Divine Greek Orthodox Church in Jacksonville, Florida. Good morning. Good morning. I hope everyone's doing great today. Uh, I think every Sunday it seems to get colder and colder when we do church, so um, I know that it feels kind of warm and snuggly in here, and I'm just so grateful that you're all here this morning and you're celebrating our divine liturgy and putting God first. This is the first day of the week. Sundays are the first day of the week, and you're all here uh, giving thanks and praising God. So thanks to all of you here, and thanks to all of you that are tuning in and worshiping with us today. You're part of our virtual family, and we love, love, love having you part of our worship service as well. And I know that every Sunday there's always new people here uh, visiting our church. Um, that's probably one of the reasons why this church every Sunday is pretty packed. But I wanted to thank those of you that are visiting, and I encourage you, as you're exiting this morning, do us a favor, introduce yourselves to me or to any of the other clergy that are here, or to our welcoming team. We'll tell you all about the great things that we have going on here at St. John the Divine, and just encourage you to get involved and engaged, research about what the Orthodox Church is all about. So let's get started. Last Sunday, I began a brand new sermon series called Going Further. And the whole intent behind that is that over the next several weeks, I want to challenge you to go in areas of your life that need to go further. Last week, we talked about how do we go further by putting the areas of our life that are holding us back. How do we go further if we don't address the areas of my life and your life that are keeping us from being the people that God yearns for us to be? And I encourage you, if you missed that sermon, it is the foundational sermon in this sermon series. Definitely go back. You can find all of them on our church website. But today I want to talk to you about going further in your faith. Life is predictably unpredictable. One day, things are going great in your life. You have everything going. The sun is out. You're doing well in your work. Your family is doing well. Everyone's healthy. That day, everything's going great. But life isn't like just that one day. In fact, sometimes one day it could be terrific, and the next day it could be terrible. One day, things could be going great in your life. The next day, you may find yourself in the hospital fighting for your life. One day, things may be okay, and the next day, you may be trying to struggle to keep your job. A few days ago, I was at the hospital, and I was visiting the hospice area of this hospital, visiting one of our parishioners. And after I had finished doing the prayer and praying over them, I was walking outside the room, and as I was walking outside this room, there was about a 30-year-old man who was walking right next to me, and he got to the elevator a little bit before I did, and he said, Father, are you wanting to go on this elevator? I said, yes, please. So I get on the elevator with him, and as I'm on the elevator, I say, are you visiting friends or family here in this hospice? He said, yes. I said, can I pray for them? He said, her name is Christy. I said, who is Christy? He said, she's my wife. And I got to go home today to tell our six-year-old daughter that mom's not going to make it. I don't know how I'm going to do it, Father. And I don't know what God's plan is. He said, one day we were all okay last year. Today, though, she's going to pass. And oftentimes in our life, when we go through those situations where one day everything's fine, and the next day, things are not. It can disorient us. It can mess us all up. And I want you to know one thing about our church and about your priest. I don't know all the answers, but I do know who does. I don't know what your future holds or my future holds, but I know who's holding our future. I don't know what you and I are going to go through, but I do know who's going to help us get through it all. When God was on the cross, Christ was on the cross, he utters this amazing statement, and in many ways he empathizes, he enters into your humanity and my humanity when he says this statement. He goes, my God, this is Christ saying this, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
And when you have one of those days, rest assured you're going to ask, where are you, God? Why am I going through all of this? My God, why have you forgotten me? But then Christ gives these words to St. Paul in the book of Hebrews, where I did some calculations. 73 times in the Bible, 73 times in the Bible, Christ says, I will not ever forget you. I love in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 6, you can read it on your own. It says this, I will not, I will not, I will not forget you. I have placed you into my heart. Why did God tell Paul to write it three times? I mean, it's written. You don't need to, the person can just simply reread that th those three words, or th few, few words. But he wanted to make sure that when you have that one day that you are all going to experience and I will experience, that on that one day you remember, I will not, I will not, I will not forget you. So how do we, as we journey in our walk of faith, how do we prepare? And maybe some of you are in that one day right now. How do we prepare for that one day that, ex that we will all experience? Let me give you three areas. One thing about seeing on the divine, you should know everyone that gives a sermon in this church, we try to be very practical. We call it practical Christianity. The half of my job is not only to give you a message on Sunday that makes you feel okay, but to give you the tools when things are not okay. So here's number one. On that day, whenever that day is, trust. Trust. So you need to know one thing, that when you go through that 9-11 moment, if you will, this is what's going to happen to your mind. Just so you know, so you're prepared. When you experience that disorientation, you are going to go through a series of sadness. Like, God, Everything was okay then. Why can't we go back to that day? Why are we in this day? It's a great deal of sadness that comes across us. Jesus can relate when he says, when the very shortest verse in the entire Bible says two words, Jesus cried. That you will go through a season of sadness, and not only will you go through a season of sadness, you're going to go through a season of shock. What is happening why is this happening? And then you will go through a season of struggle. I had someone tell me recently, Father Nick, I come to church all the time. I pray. I give to the church. But this is happening to me on this day, and I am losing my faith. And I told them what I oftentimes tell you. And that is that when you are going, that kind of faith is not true faith. If faith is only when you have good times and when you're having those good days, that's not faith. That's a conditional faith. That a faith that is not tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. A faith that is not tested is a faith that you cannot trust. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul. I like to put it to you this way. Trusting in Him is the only pathway to peace. On that day, here's number one, just trust. Here's number two. On that day, trust in His promises. You know, in the Gospel of Matthew, as you all know, there's what was called the Sermon on the Mount. It's Matthew 5, 6, and 7. This is the very first sermon that Jesus gives after he gives the very brief sermon of repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So if you ever want to know where the Lord's prayer is, it's in the Sermon on the Mount. And just so you know where this is at, where is the Sermon on the Mount? It's basically on this hill as it's overlooking the Sea of Galilee. And it's called the Mount of Beatitudes. And this is where the Beatitudes come from. And while he's on this, mess, on this side of this mount, he's giving this message to all of the early followers. He's only 30 years old, Christ is, and he's sharing this message. And do you know what his last, I will leave you with this message, kind of was from, his, from that sermon, what he had to say? I'm going to read it to you because I wanted to write it down. 
He says at the end of this message, he says, this is the last line in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is a smart man who built his house on a rock. So when the storms of life come, the rains came, the streams rose, and the winds blew and, and beat against the house, yet that house did not fall because it had the foundation of the rock. But everyone who hears these words and does not put them into practice is a foolish man who built his house, and when the rain comes, the storms of life come, and the wind blows, the house will fall and crash. Let me make this very, very simple. If you can't hear God in the storm, then you need to start reading God in the storm. If you can't hear him when you're going through that storm, then you need to read about him when you're going through that storm. Someone put it this way, if you prayed as much as you worried, you wouldn't have a lot to worry about. And then finally, number three is, on that one day we trust, on that one day we trust in his promises, and then on number three is, in that bad day, on that bad day, trust in his final destination. You know, today we celebrate a man named St. Maximus the Confessor. I don't know if you know this, but St. Maximus lived in the seventh century. He lived during a time where he was an amazing homilist. People would love to just listen to him give sermons. But he was also at times controversial amongst some of the people there. So during that time, the people that were so frustrated with him began to hurt him and to attack him. So much so, that they would end up cutting off his arm and cutting out his mouth, his tongue, so that he could not preach anymore. That's how they would abuse him. That's why it's called the confessor. The confessor means that they suffered so much, but they were not killed. That's why it's called the confessor. And so what I want you to know is that here this man was going through all of this abuse, sometimes by people within his own house, his own worship, his own church. And listen to what he has to say about our final destination. He says this, if God suffers in the flesh when he made man, should we not rejoice when we go through the suffering in our life? For we have God to share our suffering. This shared suffering confers the kingdom on us. Listen to this. For he spoke to us, if we suffer with him, then we will be glorified always with him. I love that. So that when we go through our difficult times, we know that we are going to be glorified with him. Said very simply, God's rescue plan is not earth. God's rescue plan is to get us out of earth and into the kingdom of heaven. So I leave you with this. In the 1920s, our nation, if you take some time to read about our history of our nation, the 1920s was an amazing decade in our country. The economy grew in the 1920s by 42%. Everyone was working, a tremendous amount of wealth. Everyone was having great times. People were owning property, owning homes. Everything, people had money in their accounts. That was in the 1920s. That is until 1929 and then the 1930s when the Great Depression would impact our nation and our world. During that time, people were going hungry. Almost 30% of our nation was unemployed. Most of the people were living off of just one meal a day. Stud statistics and studies are showing us right now that people during that time were selling their children to provide expenses to help offset what they were going through at that time in this country. That's how difficult it was during the Great Depression. And during that time, there was a man named Reinhold Niebuhr. You may have heard of him. He was a professor and also a theologian, someone who loved God so much. And he would see how one day in the 1920s, everything was going great in people's lives. And then in the 1930s, things were not going well in people's lives. And so he sat down one day and put pen to paper and wrote this prayer, a prayer that many of you have heard many, many times. It's one of the most popular prayers in Christianity, especially in the West. It says this. 
God, grant me the serenity. In other words, the peace, the calmness to accept the things that I cannot change. The courage to change the things that I can change. And the wisdom to know the difference. Just living one day at a time. Enjoying every moment. Accepting, though, hardships as a pathway to peace. Talking as, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is. Not as I would have had it or have it, but trusting that you, oh God, will make all things right if I just surrender to your will. And when I do that, that I may reasonably be happy in this life, because this life's going to disappoint me, but supremely happy with you forever in the kingdom to come. Amen. And so friends, I just simply give you the serenity prayer. And I'm encouraging all of you that when that day happens, trust. Trust Him. On that day, trust in His promises. On that day, trust that this is not our final destination. I don't know what's coming up, friends. I don't know what the future holds for you. I don't. Or for my future. But I do know who is holding our future in His hands. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We invite you to join Father Nick and his wife, Dr. Roxanne Lowe, on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month for their Healthy Minds, Healthy Souls call-in show at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Ancient Faith Talk.